When our nation celebrates Thanksgiving, amen? And so no matter how you're gathering this week, with large groups or small groups, no matter what it is, I want you to know that we can be a grateful people no matter what, amen? I want to read a scripture that just encouraged me this morning, and it's from 1 Thessalonians 5 and on and about, uh, verse 16. It says, let joy be your continual feast, all right? Now, before we get into turkey and all that kind of stuff later on in the week, let me just say, I sensed joy when I walked in this room today, amen? I sense it from you. We are overcomers, amen, as we sing. And then he says, make your life a prayer. You all are a walking testimony of prayer. And finally, and in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks, for this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. So, Father, today, corporately, Lord, we give thanks to you. We give thanks for every breath that we take. We give, every th we give thanks for every day of life. We give thanks for family, for friends. We give thanks for those that go before us, that, make, that you make our path straight and others make life so wonderful, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you're providing for every family represented here, Father, whether it be financially, spiritually, emotionally. You are the great giver, and we give thanksgiving for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, aren't we thankful for our worship team to get us going here today? Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. So good to be together. Amen. Well, we're going to take some time, and uh, uh, I've got, got a word for you. I'll, I'll tell you a few things along the way as, I, as I'm getting ready here. It's been kind of a crazy week and a crazy morning. Amen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, let me, before I even begin, uh, we'll get into a few little bit of announcements in just a moment. But I just want you to know. Just the fact of you being here, all right, shows you you are an overcomer, all right? Just the fact that you're here shows you that, uh, that we are here to celebrate the goodness of God. Um, it was a, it's been a crazy week. Uh, we, Miss Cindy and I were gone last week, and, and uh, we enjoyed some time away with a couple of grandkids, and we needed that, but boy, we are geared up and ready, amen? We are geared up and ready to go, and... Uh, but um, today, of all days, we, were all, we had all this planned together. We were going to have an extra room and all that kind of stuff. We can't live stream today. For whatever reason, the live stream is not working. So those of you who are listening to online, I have to upload it later, and you're catching it later. But it's just like the enemy. That's how he works, to try and bring any kind of disruption he can. Also because I'm bringing you a new message series today. And it's something I've been excited about. It's something we've been praying about it. And we're thrilled about it. And it's like the one thing I didn't, we prayed over every area, but I didn't pray over the equipment. And, uh, and so we'll, we'll figure that out this week. And, and I tell you, I, he's just sneaky. The enemy is sneaky. Uh, a few announcements for you before we get into today's message. And uh, the first one up there says this. Uh, welcome Northwest Bible Training Center. You're representing the center here with us today. We're so glad you're here. We always love it when you're with, with us. Fourth Sunday, right, of every month you guys hang out with us. And we're just glad to support you and be a part. Every time you guys give into the ministry, a portion of what you give goes right into their ministry. And so I want you to know that we believe in them. We've been supporting you guys for uh, years and years and years because of the work you do. And so we're grateful for that. And uh, we're, we're so excited about that. So glad you're here. Then the next announcement is, uh -huh. once more again, we got blankets. They're piling up. You all know that we're supporting Meals on Wheels, the local work here in Oregon City. Um, I worked for them years ago, actually I filled in as for the director at one point when she was on vacation. So I know the amount of work that goes into this and what a difference it makes in people's life. They have 130 clients and they're still delivering meals, but instead of doing it every day, they're doing it once a week. And they get a lot of frozen meals, but they have drivers, mainly staff I think that go out. But they're, gonna, they're putting together these Christmas baskets. And they called on us and said, would you provide the blankets? And I said, well, of course we will, because we have a generous congregation. So throughout this month, we're collecting those. And $6.99, those are the best places I've found to get them at Freddy's. There's some samples of them over there people have brought in. Uh, we got to supply them with 130. I don't know, I haven't counted how many we have, but uh, we'll get there. We'll do it. We'll do it, because we're generous, all right? And you all know that if they don't come in, the church will buy them and take them to them, all right? We are going to take care of these people just as we would take care of you. Next, next line is, 
uh, church decor. As far as I know, this is still going on. I know things are kind of crazy, but <laughs> we should be decorating next weekend in the evening service. Pastor Dan Paxton, uh, he is planning a decorating service. We usually put a tree out in the hallway. We usually put a tree up here. But because we've expanded, I don't think there's room. So, uh, you know, and, and so if you'd love, we'd love to have you be a part of that. That'll be next Sunday at uh, the 29th at 5 o'clock. Just come on out and, uh, and we'll be a part of that. All right. Is that all the announcements I have? Oh, good. All right. Because, uh, I mean, I like announcements. They're important church news, so we, we know we're all on the same page. But uh, I just got to jump in today because, um, just because I'm excited. I, I just, uh, I sense the joy that you had. Honestly, I'm going to give you a couple stories about me. I just love to be honest with you. I've had some bad attitudes lately, you know, and uh, they kind of come out at the wrong time, and one of them came out this morning. But anyway, it just, it just happens, and, and uh, but I want to, I just want to, first of all, you know, we, we've been gone, we were gone a month ago, and Pastor Zena filled in for us, just, we just appreciated her, you bring in the word, and then last week, Pastor Dan uh, uh, Anderson filled in for me. Well, didn't fill in me. They, they just took, they just are part of our body, just came in and, and brought the word. And it was so good on miracles. And, uh, and it was such a good refresher to me. I got to tell you, though, it's, it's in my notes here somewhere. But, but uh, I felt very honored because he told you the story about what happened up on, um, what's that road up there by the Corbett out there? Come here. Yeah, I felt honored because years ago he told me that story. And so I've known all along, this is a man of faith and God. He believes in miracles. He told us about Lori's situation. And that was a good example. If you didn't hear that last week, you can go back and find that. But uh, just thank you, Pastor Dan, for just, just delivering the message line by line. Zena, Pastor Zena, a few week, weeks ago, brought us the vision line by line and shared that with us. And uh, I just appreciate you, our pastoral staff. We all speak the same language, all right? And it's the language that Jesus wants us to give the body. And so I'm just, I just feel so very honored. Um, uh, so anyway, um, got a new series coming. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty stirred up about it. And like I say, I'm so excited. And it's just like everything just kind of come against you when you get excited about something. I don't know if that happens in your life. And, and I know God allows me to walk through situations, and so when I have little attitude issues or problems not understanding things, I always try and back up a little back and say, Lord, what are you trying to show me? And, and he does, I know he doesn't bring this on me, but he kind of walks me through some situations. And, uh, and so I'm going to kind of be a little vulnerable with you guys today as we get into this. I don't know how many weeks this is going to last on courage. I'm thinking in my head three weeks, but uh, I don't know, I'm pretty stirred up, so we'll see what happens. So... Uh, Anyway, here we go. So called courage. Uh, you and I, <laughs> we're called to be courageous. And um, I, I'm 61 years old, almost 62. And nobody in my entire life has told me to be courageous, other than the word of God, till a gentleman in our church did about two months ago. And it just like, it just like hit me. It's like, and then the word of God just kept lighten up, lighten up, lighten up, lightning, lighting me up. I mean, it's like coming off the pages every time I find the word courage and courageous and, and how important it is as believers for us to be that way. And so I just want to encourage you as we walk through this that every single one of us are called to courage. I'm going to, through this series, you're going to hear some biblical references to courageous people in Scripture. Then more than anything, in just a second, you'll find out, you'll find four words after about three weeks, you're going to get so sick of me saying, because I'm going to say them over and over and over and over. Because as I studied through this, these are the words I felt the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And so I figured, okay, Lord, if you spoke it to me, then I've got to, I've got to share it with others. And so uh, let me just back up for a minute here and just kind of talk about why I think courage is so important. Um, we're in a situation, right, where you turn on the news... You go to work. If you could go to school, you'd go to school. <laughs> but you talk to friends. You talk to people. And there's just this ongoing sense of fear out there. And, um, and, and when we first started masking up in the stores, I noticed a change in that when I saw people, like at Fred Meyer, all I could see was their eyes. And then I realized one of the emotions you can see in people's eyes is fear. <laughs> Usually, you know, you need to see people's, tell if they're smiling or whatever, you know. But it's like, and I didn't realize how strong this would become on us as a people. Not only in the United States, but around the world. 
And I'm going to share a couple personal stories, um, not pointing to any certain person or people or group, but i got to kind of line something out. Uh, I have noticed in my circle of influence that the least amount of fear comes from people older and people who are very young. Somewhere in the middle, and I don't, we don't have any 20-somethings in here except, Pastor, except for Jason, but you're strong. Okay. Colby, maybe. All right. I don't want to speak negative about the 20-somethings. But there's something we as the church have to realize. We have a group of 20-somethings that are wrapped in fear right now. I mean, story after story I've heard from other churches. I have one church that I'm close with. He basically said, all his 20-somethings are gone. They just, they just won't come. They're, just, they're afraid to go out their door. They're afraid to leave. I have people with family members that have 20-somethings. My kids are older, so they're not afraid. But, and... And not afraid, it's that fear. It's not that they're afraid, it's just like, it just encompasses them. And they're like, not going to come to Thanksgiving, not going to, I mean, you just hear it time after time after time. And, and, and I'm all about being practical, I'm all about being sensible. But I'm looking at the underlying message underneath this, and it's like, Lord, what is really going on here? And I got really encouraged this week. I'm going to give you some encouragement. Um, you know, for years, I hope I get to the sermon. For years, uh, for years, Miss Cindy and I, I would say the first third of our ministry, we worked with children 100%. I mean, we just like, as soon as we got in the ministry, we got saved, we just knew that's where it's at. And so we, we went through a season where we were working with kids and um, uh, had a school, and we just loved it until God, God called us to plant a church. And I love all you guys too, but I'm just saying, I really in... I really, re I really appreciate Pastor Zena and all you on the children's staff because it's so amazing to be with these kids. It's so amazing to be able to see so much life and so much openness to do things. And, and um, I was kind of, when this new edict came out, about 25 people per gathering, one of the things we do here, and you may not realize, but for, for a, since September or maybe we started in October, we, we hosted, well, we had Motion Monday night. All right, so that was our student ages, junior high to high school, and we, and we also invited in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in Oregon City, because they had no place to gather. So they would come in, the first time I think we had 12, then after that, every Monday night, we'd have like 20 to 25 to 28 sometimes. They would come in here, and I, every week I would watch, because I got to do the sound, I was doing what Jason's doing back there, and I'd do the sound, and Gwen would be back there doing the, the media with me, and, and it's like, they would walk in, there was no fear on them. They, they were just like, glad to be here. Let's get going. Let's hear the word. Let's gather together. And then, and then this thing came out. They also meet here every Thursday. They meet around the lunch hour. And they meet in the fellowship room. But there's more than 25. In fact, I think there's 50 plus. I mean, they're just, this parking lot fills with all these young people. They're just like, we want to be here. And I'm not, I'm not a part of it. They have their leaders that lead them. I'm not sure what happens. But the thing that really impressed me was last week they regrouped and their leaders got together, their student leaders and adult leaders, and I think there was about 10 or 15, I'm not sure. We opened up the building and uh, said, you're welcome to come. But they regrouped and, say, and they figured out a plan of how they can keep meeting during this time. So next week they're back into breaking up into groups. They'll be here. They'll all be coming again. And I... It was such a positive statement to me because this is our upcoming generation, people. This is our, these, are, these are people, this is how we should all be acting. I mean, I'm just being real bold here. It's just like, yeah, we'll work, we'll do our best, but we're just like, the word of God is going to be spoken. Nothing is going to come against us. And the biggest enemy I think we have is the Satan's tools to try and put thoughts in our minds or fear in our head or things to hold us back. And I'm telling you, people, it's time for us to be like our young people, our kids and our students. We're called to courage. Amen. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So enough of that. But that's good. Okay. Then another thought I have, again, I'm just, I hope I get to my sermon. This is good, too. Because uh, it all ties in. The other thought I had this morning is, is um, when I was a young boy, I can, 
young boy, like in my preteen years, the draft was still going, all right? And I remember as a kid, back on the old black and white TV that was snowy, if you got the rabbit ears just right, I remember we would watch for my brother's number to come up, you know, because he, was, he would be called into the draft. It turns out he never was. Um, he, uh, I think the draft ended in about 72 or 73, somewhere in there, I can't remember exactly. Uh, he graduated in 1970. And I remember as a young person at that moment contemplating, even though we didn't have what we have today, there was a lot of fear of war. And I used to have nightmares, daily nightmares about about being in the military and being shot and killed. And I'd actually, you know how you're not supposed to die in your nightmares? I did. It's like, I didn't understand why I did, but I would die in them. And so I, I had this unnatural fear that was on me. And so I had that in the back of my mind. And then as I developed my career and things, I've always tried to understand how does a fireman be a fireman? How does a policeman be a policeman? How does a military person willingly sign up for something that puts themselves in harm's way every time they're on duty. And then you really get me upset if I say, then how do we not respect them? But that's a whole other thing. But, but it's like, what allows a person to be called to that kind of courage? I know it's not just by accident or happenstance. I know it's not just like, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just a courageous person. No, there has to be something God has done. I mean, if you think if you're a parent, you know, if your house is on fire and your kids are in there, you got all the courage you need to go in there, right? I mean, it just, it's not, but it's not just instinct that God put there. There's something in it. And as I researched it, and this is the part I'm excited about, this is the part I'm excited about exploring with you guys, is I read Bible section after Bible section of all the things that came to my mind about courage, and I found a certain pattern. When God called people to courage, there was a pattern all the way back from the Old Testament to the New Testament, that people like you and I, followers of God in the Old Testament, followers of Christ, well, they were always followers of Christ, they just didn't have the full awareness, right now, that God has given us the tools and equipment to matter what happens, okay, no matter what happens, we can always be, it isn't always pleasant, <laughs> it isn't always fun, and you don't have to depend on your own, because I feel weak in so many areas, you know. But I don't have to depend on my, my past. I can depend on God's word for courage. And I hope with kind of seeding that, that's what you guys get a feel for today. Uh, I tried to outline it as carefully as I could so that you would pick up on what I'm trying to say. And I think this message is vital for us. I have an outline. If you'd like to follow the outline, I guess they're over there today. Um, if you're online, you can get them on our website, or you can just follow up behind me. But I'm going to start with an opening scripture that we'll carry out through each sermon that really spoke to me, and it's found in John 16, verse 33, the book of John. It starts out in, everything I've taught you, I'll kind of go over this in a second. This is Jesus, everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, okay, we're in an unbelieving world, we are going to experience, just Jesus tells us, troubles and sorrows. There's plenty of that going on. But he says in the midst of all this, and now I'm paraphrasing, but you'll get the gist of what the word says here. Just read it and let it absorb in you. He says, but you should be courageous. No, you maybe should try being courageous. No, this, this is a command. This is a direction. This is something, God wouldn't give it to us if we couldn't follow it. He says, you must be courageous. Okay, it doesn't say you won't still have some doubts. You won't say you won't get scared at times. You won't say that fear happens at times. It does, but it said, the Bible says, if the Bible says it, then it knows I, can, I know I can do it. He's speaking to his disciples. He's speaking to us. You must be courageous. For I have conquered the world. Now, if you're reading different versions, uh, a lot of them will say, like, good cheer. It's, it's the original translation. Uh, a lot of people translate it from cheer into the word cheer. And I got to thinking, you know, if you're, if, you're, uh, if you're with a group of people and you're together and you have your hot cider or adult beverage or however you choose to celebrate, you're like, cheers. Okay? Cheers. There's something about that unity, being together, 
cheers. God wants us to be like that all the time. Be courageous. Be of good cheer. Um, just, just, and then I thought about coming in today, and, and I had this attitude, because this wouldn't work right, this little video thing, you know. And, uh, and I was getting real mad. I was mad at the devil, but I was, I was mad at me and mad at the devil. And it's like, and then the pastors all took over, and the elders, they started praying, and Pastor, it's going to be all right. You just go do your thing, and we'll, 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 we'll handle it. You know, we'll set up another overflow room and get it all, got it all figured out. And I thought, yeah. <laughs> Let's be a cheer. I mean, it's like, thank the Lord we're able to gather today. Thank the Lord that he's still at work. Thank the Lord we can still be courageous. Amen? So I looked at this, and here's the four words. We'll leave the scripture up there. This is what I believe will roll around in your spirit as it has mine these last few weeks are four words and you don't have to write them down you'll get that chance a little bit the four words all start with R just because pastors think it's fun to have them all start with the same letter so but I think the Lord gave me these words remind look at that first word taught you and everything Jesus said I've taught you whenever you feel fear or worry come upon you the first thing you're supposed to do no focus on is remind yourself what God taught you remind that's the first word the second word that I have is receive receive because then he goes he can, can use to say have great confidence and peace we receive okay Lord you're in this with me in fact you've gone before me in fact you're never gonna leave me so it's like I'm reminded what the word says I can have courage I can have peace I can receive peace and confidence because it says in the word you're gonna do this and then the third word that I put he says for in this unbelieving world you have it you're experiencing trouble and sorrows and you'll see how this ties into some other sections but I I, really, I have the word remove we remind we receive, remove anything that isn't right that anything isn't of God yeah there's there's troubles and sorrows but God didn't bring them they're not going to overcome me remove all those thoughts and then finally is return return to him you must be courageous for I've come. go do what God has called you now that might not make a whole lot of sense on this first one but after about three weeks it's going to start making more and more sense amen remind receive remove return I got I've got a little fear coming on me remind receive remove Let's go return to what he wants you to do so we want to develop a courageous lifestyle that reinforces this belief want to do that I'm gonna start with the first fill in there is a courageous vision I think we're really called to have a courageous vision we try to set this example here at Connection Church but this has to you have to apply this personally you never hear us we when we have a great need we try not to preach the need we preach the vision of what God's wanting us to do all of us need that courageous vision that God has for us so just you all you all are pretty quiet here am I, am I doing all right with you you're like okay all right you just stay with me all right we have a courageous vision here and it's on the walls if you're in the building with us it says our vision is we would know God that we'd find freedom that we would discover purpose and make a difference now I was just kind of being uh, what's the right word I don't want to see a smart aleck with God but it's like okay God does my vision fit into this does the vision for the church fit in to what you just told me and so about reminding receiving removing and returning why is it four points just like in this and he brought me back to where we got this vision and it's found in Ephesians of 1 verses 17 to 18 so we'll put that one up there we're asking God the glorious Father our Lord Jesus Christ to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you may grow in the what's the first thing knowledge of God this is a pattern that sp spoke by the Apostle Paul it's spoken also times in the Old Testament and the New Testament of this pattern that God wants the vision for our life every believer we're on a journey all right we continue to grow the first step of every person's journey is to know God so that's remind okay I know God I asked the Lord into my life he's my Savior he never gonna leave me or forsake me that's the first step no God remind 
And then it says, verse 18, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. That's what we receive. You know, we call it find freedom. There are all kinds of hang-ups. Like I had that recurring nightmare when I was a kid of, of dying in war, okay? I found freedom to that. I no longer have those. And so when you, when you, when you, when you receive freedom, you let go of those things that, that shouldn't be a part of your life. And so, so you, you want your heart to be flooded with truth and with light. And then it goes on to say, he says, Apostle Paul says, so that you can have the under, and understand the confident hope he has given you, which we call discover purpose. The confident hope you have is knowing you're doing what you're called to do. Therefore, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen today or tomorrow. You know you're called to follow your purpose. If you're doing something that's out of your purpose, you say, okay, I get out of that and I follow my purpose. That's why we teach it so strongly here. You need to be doing what God has put in your life to do. He has a plan. It's up to you to choose it, but he has a plan, and you want to follow that with confidence. And then finally, um, he's given you to those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. And that's, that's make a difference. Make a difference in people's lives. That's where we're called to go. That's where we're called to set out and go and do exactly what, you, what we're supposed to do. So I thought, okay, Lord, you're right. It's a vision of our church. We remind, we receive freedom, we remove things that we aren't supposed to do and follow what we're supposed to do, and then we go, we return to you, we, we do, we make a difference. So here's what a courageous vision has allowed us to do in this body that you're all a part of, and those of you listening online, they're a part of. Number one, we create an atmosphere, everyone is welcome. We can be, well, well what if they, what well, someone with messy doctrine comes in? It does, it's, that's not in the, we want everyone welcome. You can't not, I'm talking about the people, you guys. You all make me feel welcome. I can't imagine how anyone could come in here and not feel welcome. Amen? It's something, because it's just something that's in, it's in the vision, it's in you. You want people of all types and makes to be in here and feel welcome. Revelations 22, 17, we're told this. The spirit of the bride says this. Come! <laughs> this is a time where the enemy wants churches closed down because of this truth. The Bible says, come, come, come. Let anyone who hears this say, come. Let anyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life. We got the courage to be open in our churches, in our homes, to everyone. Did you know some of you have different doctrinal understanding than I do? Do you know some of you probably even disagree strongly with some points? I say, come, <laughs> come, <laughs> let's let iron sharpen iron. Let's just get better. Let's just grow more. That, you know, the enemy wants to bring division. The Bible says, come, come. Because the point number two is this is important. Everyone is needed. You're here because you're needed. Everyone is needed. 1 Corinthians 12, 21 says, it will be wrong for the eye to say to the hand, I don't need you. Remember when he gives the example of the different body parts? You need every part. You're a body part, every one of you. You are needed. We are needed. In order to walk forth courageously, I can't do this alone. You can't do it alone. We need, you know, there's the, the world has taken on this statement. They always say, we're in this together. They're not. <laughs> but you and I are. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, they all say, well, we're in this together. No, you're not. You, you, we are. All right? All right, enough of that. Okay, um, equally wrong if we had the hands to the foot, I don't need you. See, the world will tell you if you're not needed <laughs> in subtle and direct ways. In the church, everybody has a place. Every person is needed. Every person is wanted. All right? Please don't let me hold you back. In fact, this, is a, this God, he wants to make sure we understand, all right? In fact, he says, the weaker you are, the more we need you. Well, can I be courageous doing that? Yeah. The weaker I am, the Bible says, the weaker our parts are more vital and essential. 
well, but I just do this. I just, I just, you know, I just smile at people. That's all. I'm, I'm just not comfortable talking to people. Well, you're needed. The weaker you are, the more essential you are. Well, but I can, I can preach and I can, I can play the keyboard and I can do the AV and I can do the parking lot. I'm just telling myself, you're really not needed. <laughs> I, I, I am, but I'm just saying, God doesn't call that. He calls every part to do their part. In the world we're taught, we've got to be able to do all these things. No, you do what you're called to do. What you're called to do, amen? And then one more point there, number three. Um, I think this is good. <laughs> um, part of being a part of a body of Christ is that everyone is experiencing new life. Not just new salvations, but new life that we're growing every day. That every time we gather, every time we're with people, every time we share a scripture, every time we spend time alone with the Lord, everything we do brings us one step closer to experiencing more and more new life every day. We want to change. I don't care if you've been coming. To, some of you have been coming to church with me for almost 30 years. <laughs> yeah. Some of you, this is your first time. Whether it's your first time or 30 years, all right, I want you to change when you leave. Not because of something I said, but whatever God's doing in you. We want to grow every time we gather. We want new life. Romans 10, 13 says this, and it's true. Everyone, are you an everyone? Yeah, we are. We're this together. Everyone, everyone who calls on the name of Lord, Yahweh will be rescued and experience new life. See, if it was supposed to be the same tomorrow as it is today, it wouldn't be new. Every, the Bible says every, every morning is new. Every experience is new. Well, I've done this for years and years. I want something new out of it. I've been going to church since 1987. A lot of you have been much longer than that. I mean, faithfully to church. Remember when church used to be open like six times a week and you were there all the time? I did not miss, you know, my poor kids. We drug them to everything, you know, and we'd, they'd get there early and play around on the... But we were just there all the time. But we always experience something new. That's how church is supposed to be. So the second section that will kind of, um, we got, we got a ways to be done, but just to kind of, the second half there is, is the part that I want to kind of focus on today. And we'll bring an Old Testament story in. I say story, but my children's ministry years tell me you never say story to a child because they think it's made up. All right. This is a biblical truth. All right. We call them Bible stories, but they're not. Story we think of crazy fairy tales. No. This is the truth. I call this courageous commands. Courageous commands. Moses had a vision. Moses had a vision from God to take the Israelites to the promised land. We won't get into that, but through disobedience, he doesn't get to do it. It gets passed on to somebody else. It's passed on to Joshua. Now let's start at the book, beginning of the book of Joshua. If you have your Bible full along, because it will be better to see it in full text. If not, just watch up front. But watch how Joshua is going to be reminded. He's going to receive. He's going to remove. All right, and he's going to get ready to go. So here we go. Joshua 1, verses 1 to 2. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. And he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. this highlighted therefore the time has come for you to lead these people the Israelites across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them the first step of all of courage always begins I believe with reminding that's the first fill in remind yourself of what he has called you to do Aaron excuse me Joshua was reminded this is what the Lord told you to do the time has come for you to lead these people. Now, at that time, he probably didn't have the courage to do it. At that time, thinking through it, it's like, I could think of a zillion other people that could do a better job than me, right? Remind, God passed the vision to Joshua. What has God spoken to you? I mean, it, right now, he's probably prompting you. He's probably prompted some things in you. And he's, well, I just haven't moved forward, and I, I haven't maybe had the courage. Well, Watch what Joshua did and see if that will help you and I. Allow yourself, will you allow yourself to grow today? Let's do it. Let's grow today. 
Because remember, God doesn't give you a vision, no God, remind you of it, without also having a course of action for you to take. And he'll be alongside you. So the second thing I see Joshua doing is he receives God's miracles. Everything God does, the fact that you're here today is a miracle. The fact that we're breathing is a miracle. The fact that, that in COVID, you know, our church is still growing and flowing. and do, it's, it's a miracle of God, all right? So we've got to receive those things. And just a couple verses, starting there in verse 3. And Pastor Dan taught on that last week. Miracles. He goes, I promise you what I promised Moses. He goes, wherever you set foot, you will be, you will land. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. And then he continues in verse 5. No one will be able to stand against you. Okay, that's the miracle. As long as you live. It's like, okay, God, you want me to do this. You're telling me. It's going to take miraculous work, but you're going to do it. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you. I will not abandon you. God will do whatever he needs to do, whatever miracle is necessary to allow you to be courageous and move forward with his plan for you. He goes before Joshua to defeat the enemy. He will not fail you. He will not fail me. And then jump down to verse 6. These are verses we know very well. A lot of us have read written this, read this, we say this to ourselves, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Let me say it like this, Joshua didn't need courage to defeat the enemies, Joshua needed courage to follow the plan God had for him. God's already going to go before and take care of the enemies. He didn't need that. He needed courage from God to follow through with what God told him to do. Let me bring it into the New Testament, bring it into these days. I mean, I get mad at the devil. I do. But I don't need courage to defeat the devil because Jesus already did that. You don't need courage to defeat the works of the enemy. Jesus already did that. You and I need courage to follow God's plan for your life. That's where I need the courage. That's where I have to look into what God's teaching me. Devil, he's under God's feet, under Jesus' feet. He really is. He, oh, we, we did a whole series, and all he can do is mess with your mind and put thoughts in you and, and you know, use people against you. But he's got no power. He's been defeated. He wants to trick you into thinking you can't follow God's plan because he knows you're going to make a difference. He knows because of your life, people are going to be brought into eternal life with Jesus. And he's not. He's a thief and a liar. So in this, he's reminding himself, Joshua, of what God told him to do. He's receiving whatever miracles God has for me because he probably knew what was ahead. But okay, God, you says I can do it. So point number three, what Joshua has to do, what we need to do, you got to remove anything not in God's plan. And this is how it's explained to him. Remove. Joshua 1, verses 7 and 8. He goes, be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey the instructions Moses gave you. Do not de deviate from them, either turning to the left or the right. Then you will be successful. In other words, do not do anything that is not in God's plan. Sometimes, oh, I should do this. I should. Is it in God's plan? Is it in God's word? Is it what he spoke to you? And then he continues to say, well, you know, because I don't remember. Did God really tell me to do that? You know, you know, is that it? Well, this is why we have to go back to verse 8 there. It says meditate. Meditate. Study the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then, only then, once you remove all those things that are not of good, of God, wrong thoughts, wrong ideas, wrong direction, get rid of that. Study God's word. Meditate on it day and night. He says, only then will you prosper. Only then will you have the courage you need to do what I've called you to do. So how do we do that? 
well, that's easy, Pastor. I mean, I mean, that's easy for you to say, but it's like, what am I supposed to do? Let me give you some practical tools here that I've learned. Point A, in whatever to do this, you've got to speak God's word out loud. You know why you need to speak it out? It freaks out the devil, and it speaks to your mind. Well, God's word says this. I can do it. God's word says I'm to go. God's word says I'm to love. No matter. God says I'm supposed to bless and not curse. God's word says it. And you've got to say that out loud sometimes. You've got to find strength scriptures that strengthen you. There's lots of them in here. Lots of them. One of mine, favorite, John 4, 1 John 4, 4. Little children, you can be certain that you belong to God and have conquered them. For the one who is living in you is far greater from the one who is in the world. You may have learned it in King James, but he who is in me is not greater than he who is in the world. I mean, a lot of us learned that early in our ministry. Far greater is he than anything else. Just write, you might want to write these down. These are just good ones that I like. Romans 8, 37, Psalm 27, 1, Psalm 103, 103, 3, Philippians 4, 19. Romans 8, 37, Psalm 27, 1, Psalm 103, 3, Philippians 4, 19. I didn't write them out, but you might, if you need to find some scriptures to hang on to, those are good ones. I could give you about 10,000 more, but those are good ones. You could probably give me 10,000 of them also. So not only to that, you speak it out. Point B, think about it day and night. You can't, oh, I did that on Sunday morning. I did that during night devotions. No, you need to chew on them all day. So if you need to put them in your car, on your visor, put them on your bathroom, on the mirror, whatever you need to do, have it pop up on your phone, your smartphone, remind you of a read the, read the verse today, whatever it is. Put it in your calendar. Most of us are awake at least 16 hours a day. Some a lot more, <laughs> some a lot less. If you're only meditating on the word when you do your devotional, or when you're saying your prayers or reading a little bit of scripture, that's not enough. Because all those other hours, there's an enemy that's trying to, he's speaking to you 100% of the time. Oh, God didn't really want you to do that. Oh, no. You should be afraid. You don't want to do that. No, don't do that. Your friends are not going to like you. You know, that's what he's speaking. Meditate on day or night. Here's a test. You just try this, because this is what I do. Believe it or not, sometimes I have really off days. And uh, I go to bed pretty upset for different reasons. If I go to bed upset and I wake up during the night, you know what I think about? <laughs> Being upset. I just do. But if I will remind myself of a scripture, but even better than that, this is what I do. I remind myself as a song, of a song, a scriptural worship song. There are times I've done that and I wake up in the night and the song is still going in my head. Now that's not me. That's God. Or I'll wake up in the morning and it's the first song on my, on my, on my heart, on my mind. I tell you people, it'll, change, it'll give you courage. It'll change you if you'll do these little things. And then finally, just make, make, make it practical. Make it practical. Frequency really is the key. It's not how much, it's how often. All right? Don't be obsessed with reading the whole Bible in a year. If you want to do it, do it. It's awesome. I've done it before. But that put a lot of pressure on me. And, uh, and, and sometimes I would just read it and not really pay attention. So I really encourage you. Psalm, Proverbs 3, verses 1 to 4 says, My child, never forget these things I've taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you're going to live many years. Your life is going to be satisfying. I would say satisfying. I didn't look it up, but I would say it's full of courage. I would say it's full of joy. I would, feel, I would say satisfying life is full of good cheer. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Verse 4, then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. Point four, we're getting ready to wind down. And that's the final word is return. After you've done all this, you've reminded yourself of what God says. You've received whatever miracles, whatever's needed to happen. 
after you've removed anything that's gotten away, any obstacles, wrong thinking, now it's time to return to the man, command he gave you and go. And like I say, this is the process Joshua did. Joshua 1.9 says this, this is my command. He goes, be strong and courageous. After all this, he's been assured, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Because of that, Joshua's prepped. He was ready. He was full of courage. He could go because he knew God was going to be with him. Let's make this declaration as a last fill in there. These four words that I think are important to us that you'll apply to scriptures. I think you'll look at scripture different if you say, God, what are you trying to teach me in this? If I'm called to courage, what are you trying to remind me in the scripture? What are you trying to remind me of? Lord, I need to receive from you in this scripture. I believe you're a miraculous God. I believe you'll make a way where there needs to be made a way. I believe whatever needs to happen will happen because your word says so. And Lord, what do I need to remove? Wrong thinking, wrong thoughts, things that are distracting me, wrong direction. I remove all those things in my life and instead I return to what you've called me to do. Nothing's going to hold us back. Nothing's going to hold us back. Let's close your notes and let's all pray together. Father, you've laid it out in your word as we follow you each day that we have the courage that we need. Just as you've done through people in the word of God and you're doing with us today, you've commanded us to do a process, to take some steps, to, to stay in line with what you've called us to do. And I thank you that we learn today, we're reminded that, that we, don't need, we, don't, we don't need courage to defeat the enemy. Jesus, you did that. We need courage to follow your plan. And God, we don't look to man. We don't look to the left or the right. We look to you and the promises given to us. We're going to remind ourselves. We're going to receive. We're going to remove doubt and return and go. So, Father, every person that's in the sound of my voice, Lord, I speak life to them. I speak blessing to them. I thank you, Lord, that they're just beginning to understand you've already made a path to courage for every single one of us. I thank you, Lord, that every single one of us understands, even if we consider ourselves the least, how valuable we are to you and to the kingdom. I thank you, Father God, that all our wrong thinking goes, that we meditate on the word day and night, and that gives us the courage to do what you've called us to do. But there may be some in the sound of my voice right now that have, that have not, uh, not accepted Christ in their life. And many of us here together, we, we have. And, but we know that, that, uh, that with, with you by our side, we can truly conquer everything that comes our way. But if there's anybody listening to me or anybody in this room who's not said yet, you know, I've never really made Jesus my, the Lord of my life. I want to invite him in now. If there's anybody like that today, I got good news for you. We can pray that all together. So if you've not asked the Lord to be in your life, will you do that with me now? Just for a moment, lift your hand up and put it down. This is just a simple call from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all say this together. Say, Father God, we thank you for the courage to believe what the Word of God says. We thank you for the ability to declare with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. We believe in our heart that Christ raised, was raised from the dead. And we profess it with our mouth that Jesus, you are Lord. In Jesus' name we all say together, amen, amen. Can I get you all just to stand with me? And I'm going to dismiss you in just a moment. I want to remind you of a couple things. First of all, once again, let me just speak over you. As you go out today, you're courageous people. You have courage, not because of your ability, but because of God's going before you. You are courageous because God has a pan and a path, path where he says, I will not leave you, I will not forsake you. I will go before you, I will, and I'll be behind you both. He'll walk you through it. 
And so whatever you're facing this week, as you're gathering with family and friends for Thanksgiving, as you're walking through your time at work, as you're just making it day to day, but rejoicing in what God's doing, knowing you can do it with courage. Amen? Now, over on the left side of the, of the, of the church here, we have um, uh, Pastor Dan and, and Lori there. They'd love to pray with you. If you have any kind of prayer need at all, just walk over to them right afterwards. They would love to spend some time. Maybe you need, after he preached on miracles, maybe you need a miracle. Let them pray for you. Maybe you just need a little extra boost of courage. Let them pray for you. And if they aren't enough, they'll call some other people in and we'll pray for you too. Amen. If you have an offering for us today, whether either room that you're in, um, I just want to honor that. It's not a big collection thing, but it's an honor. You honor the Lord with your tithes and offerings. And I want you to know it's making a difference in our world, in our church, and we're going to be strong because of what God has done in you. Amen? So if you have an offering, you know where to leave them in the basket, or you do it online. And, uh, and I think I'll just pray over you, and I'll release you. How's that sound? So, Father God, thank you for this wonderful group of people. Thank you, Lord, for these courageous people. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we don't have to work it up, Lord. You've already laid it out. And we just want, we, we need to follow your plan to have that courage in our life to follow the plan for our life. And so, Lord, may we all be, according to Ephesians 6.10, be supernaturally infused with strength because of our life union with you, Jesus. We thank you for this explosive power flowing in and through us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May, may his face shine upon you and let it reflect on the people all around you and give you peace. Amen. All right, God bless you guys. Have the best week ever, amen? And we'll see you next week. Remember, prayer over that way. Bye-bye.